where is that? It's gray, but where is that line between mm. and not? Yeah, I, I, I think it's definitely gray and not everyone will respond to the, the same kind of coaching methods or, or techniques or strategies. So with that in mind, I think where we need to be really careful is the, the cultural ideals and how they intensify the mm. type of uh, discipline um, that we hear so much now in the in in the media with gymnasts speaking out. A crucial point um, that you have also um, picked up in other podcasts is this uh, idea that the gymnast needs to be a, a child or needs to have a child body or has has a limited time frame to learning whatever she aims to learn or wherever whatever her capacity may be. So this idea that gymnastics is, uh, is bound to childhood. If, if that is the understanding and if that is the aim to be successful within the time frame of, the chi of, of childhood, then while the gymnast is learning the skills, there's a risk for impatience or frustration uh, from the side of the coach because learning any movement skill is not straightforward. While it may be progressively built up in stages and over a certain amount of time. We know how messy it can be in learning. You learn something, then it's not there anymore, or you know, it, it doesn't move forward at all. Learning movement skills as any learning is not linear, constant. Yep. So but if if there is pressure because we also because the assumption is you need to have a certain thing in in your routines or, or or be able to perform in competition at a certain time then that to me can be the point where the line is crossed you must now do this or or there there is a risk of abusive types of methods to enter the the coaching context could be yelling could be could be physical abuse could be shaming in 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 a way um that we've heard because it is assumed that learning can be linear or because it's built up like this it will be linear but it is never it's much more complex than that so i think that is definitely one area where the line can be crossed yeah i'm not sure if that answers your question no. No, it does. I think the the idea you brought up that is very important is the is the false notion that gymnastics progression is linear and constant. And I think the that's history of gymnastics can offer a certain amount of explanation. And there's lots of people who have commented on that in different kinds of avenues now about this change from the 1960s to the 1970s, mainly where quite a radical change in gymnastics or women's artistic gymnastics occurred in a relatively short time frame in, and probably as a gymnastics has never changed as much as then mm. since um so from the chaslavska era where adult women were performing the types of exercises that they were performing of course this was also shaped by the type of apparatus that there was that there was available at the time to gymnastics being a becoming a child sport or assumed a child sport and, and Nadia Comaneci being the sort of key gymnast who who demonstrated how this can be done and, and how successful this is. And with that, the coaching transformed in, in so many ways at that time. So in the Chaslavska era, it was also mainly women coaching. There wasn't as much training. It was not the same amount of training as the same type of training. And of course, then it became this, I don't know whether I should name it like that, but this Caroly type of system of coaching. Um, and while they were not the only ones that used this type of coaching, at least demonstrated globally in, when um, at the Montreal Olympic Games, when Nadia Comaneci was so successful, that this is the most successful way to do things in this sport. This spread very quickly, despite uh, the Cold War curtain still being really real. People copied. There was, of, of course, also exchanges where people, as a coaches on the other side of the curtain, could learn. But this became accepted as 
the truth or the norm that kids need to be selected early on. They need to start very early on. They need to train a, a lot and they need to train in a certain way. And the coach gymnast relationship is in a certain way with the coach being the authority and the the knower and the gymnast is the the object that can be manipulated and taught and protected and made a star. So I, I do think that that history has a lot to say for the complete normalization of yeah. the type of gymnastics or the type of practices in gymnastics that we know of. And maybe gymnastics is right in that phase now that perhaps now with what's been going on, people will be more prepared to jump through that hoop or that go through that door to say, okay, we are not going to do this anymore. We're going to do it like this. So that the, perhaps if, if we were to have a discussion again in 10 years, we would look back and say, oh no, we were at this turnoff and, and now we can see some differences since then. I, I wish for that because I'm, I'm convinced that elite gymnastics doesn't need to be the way it now, and, and we have, you've had um, Simone Biles' previous coach on your podcast. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sorry for not remembering. <laughs> you know, that there will be more of those types of coaches. I'm sure that there are coaches like this, but they're perhaps not, they don't, they haven't had the privilege of such a successful athlete so that they are well known globally for, for having worked differently. Right. But that see more of those examples at the highest highest level of gymnastics who who can confirm to the gymnastics community in a similar way that uh, Bella Carroli with Nadia Comaneci did in 1976 yeah. that hey, look now we can have a paradigm shift again I saw that quick or quick type quicker type of change into a more ethically acceptable type of coaching, training, um, but also organization of gymnastics because it's not only coaches who to change, it's also gymnastics organizations that need to transform so that this type of abusive behavior doesn't happen. Yeah, I, I completely My agree. Opinion, and I think, but I, what do you yeah. feel are ways to move out of these cultural silent norms that are so you know un immoral sometimes, unfortunately? You mean on a on a bigger scale? <laughs> uh, however, you feel it is is beneficial. To yeah, I mean, I, I I think having been involved heavily involved in coach education, that that's got to go a long way or some way. Perhaps uh, requires a generational shift at some point. Yeah. As, as perhaps it's easier to teach younger coaches who who haven't been in the system for so long than perhaps coaches who, who've got lots of experience doing something in a certain way. I would suggest that talking about the inbuilt discipline or the, the inherent disciplinary nature of elite sport or sport in general, how through very simple coaching strategies, this can be not countered, but Perhaps the effect uh, that the effect isn't as strong. Looking here, just to be very practical now, also is you know you mentioned this earlier on to have this the gymnast autonomy or, or to control something by herself uh, in the gym with this spatial organisation where coaches can see everything very easily all the time. And, and a possibility is for gymnasts to do stuff unobserved or at least given the task or you do this at this station over there i'm not looking i'm trusting you that you do this properly this this doesn't need to be something that is dangerous but this can be easily built into for for, for the younger gymnasts as well as the older ones gymnasts are not usually mucking around in the gym they're usually very diligent people they want to do things right so there's no need to not trust these these individuals. That's a simple way of building in something that allows autonomy or agency or asking lots of questions. I believe you, you've discussed this also with Nick, Nick Raddick. But to me, that's also something simple enough. So how did the skill feel? What do you think you need to do now because it's not working yet? Or at the end of a training session, how do we have, how do you evaluate the training session? What do you want to do better tomorrow? 
or the next time or or at the beginning is there something specific today we're going to have this type of training what do you want to do on as a, what do you want to achieve or improve on vault i mean this this is not groundbreaking science and i know that lots of coaches do this type of stuff but to me it counters some of those disciplinary effects that formal sport has built in to me it's it can also could also help to have the space open sure um, for people to come in or one space that I observed for, for, for a long time, the changing rooms or the gymnasts didn't have any changing rooms. The lockers were also in this open space. So even there, the coaches could observe what they were doing. So there literally was no privacy or, or space given to the gymnasts. That to me could also counter some of that all encompassing <laughs> control that coaches have is to to allow gymnasts their own space yep. if, if that is is possible yeah in terms of learning gymnastic skill in the proper technique that that is expected so that it doesn't lead to deductions that's perhaps a bit more difficult there isn't so much wriggle room there but this can be also communicated that okay here that we can't discuss it this is how you've got to do it there are reasons for this and there are X, X, Y. But there are perhaps other ways to bring in creativity or play into a training session. And the last thing I want to kind of summarize and make sure we talk about here, because I know this is going to come up in 100 emails, is one of the best ways to change the authoritarian or disciplinary uh, norm that may not be great in your gym is to 100% get rid of using conditioning as punishment. I think oh, sure. that, that is something that, is again some people aren't maliciously doing this some people are unfortunately but they have grown up in a culture where if you fall off beam or you miss a skill you go do rope climbs if you talk back you do push-ups right and like that kind of stuff and i think that we we in our gym are very firm on conditioning is never a positive nor a negative reinforcement because we view it as this is a necessary uncomfortable, challenging part of the sport that is a part of moving towards your goals and being disciplined for yourself and being in control of your own gymnastics. And you are the one that is in the, the, the story as the hero. I am helping you. And unfortunately, sometimes you have to do things that aren't fun and aren't exciting, like boring basics or conditioning. So we never have you fell, go do rope climbs or you fell, do push ups. We also don't have if I do this right, can I get out of conditioning, right? If we do, if we make an, enough skills or we make routines as a team, can we not do our cardio today? Yeah. I think both of those things remove it from the, uh, 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 a, not a chore, but an, an, an uncomfortable part of the sport that you have to kind of work through. And it puts it in the bag of like, you're, you're bidding and you're, you're bargaining with your conditioning. So we're, we're very uh, firm on that, that instead of punishing somebody for falling or something of that nature, we try to talk to them and communicate about that. And especially with um, someone's not doing drills, someone's not motivated, someone is talking maybe when it's their turn, they're maybe too chatty in the chalk bucket. We would rather calmly talk to them about, hey, uh, are you, is everything okay? Is there, do I need to clarify the assignment? Is there a reason why you guys are not maybe productive as possible? And I get it in a pandemic, it's a very social experience in the gym, but treating those things with honest communication and saying, Hey, listen, it's very frustrating for me as a coach and us as a coaching staff, when I build all these drills and I try to make these practice plans, and then we only have 45 minutes on this event. And there's a lot of side talk and there's a lot of, you know, maybe wasted opportunities to get better. Mm. I'm trying to help you reach your goals. So the the route of communication and explaining and um trying to build accountability into their own self of gymnastics is a much much better option long-term mm -hmm. punishment as conditioning mm -hmm.